Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Go Cardless using Bubble.io. Alright, so if you don't know who I am, my name is Zubair, I run ASCII Tech Labs. Uh, we build products for clients around the world you, without code, uh, particularly using a platform called Bubble. And we've been doing this for around two and a half years and we've served more than 50 clients. Uh, recently, I was asked to uh, spec out the complexity of integration with Go Cardless and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So first of all, what is Go Cardless? Uh, it's a payment processor uh, similar to Stripe, but Stripe is more uh, geared towards card payments, uh, debit cards or credit cards. Go Cardless is more geared towards pulling money from bank accounts, uh, like ACH transfers for the US, uh, BAX transfer for the UK, and SEPA or other software transfers for around, the, around Europe as well. Uh, but the key thing is it's uh, it pulls money from the bank. Uh, it has a lower cost because card payment processors have like the Visa and MasterCard fees on top of the payment processor fees like Stripe. So Stripe fees has to be a combination of MasterCard fee and uh, Visa fee. And then Stripe has its own fee. Uh, when, it, when pulling money from bank accounts is cheaper relatively, uh, especially with open banking in the UK and Europe as well. Uh, it's relatively cheaper so the fees are uh, better and it's really good for like recurring payments as well but it's also good for like one-off payments okay so enough about go cardless uh, there are two ways i've done the integration in bubble already there are three ways actually i've done two of them in bubble uh, which i can show just now and then talk through how the implementation was done and then go over the third way uh, which i wouldn't recommend generally speaking so the first is uh, modal so you can like uh, have like go cardless can power this pop-up modal uh, and it goes through the whole thing uh, you can enter your name last name email everything and everything's going to happen in this go cardless modal this is not powered by bubble this is a, a coded implementation we just ask go cardless we inject a script and then go cardless takes over at this point and uh, if we have once we complete it go cardless will uh, what's it called not webhooks, webhooks is the one back end, but it's like front end webhooks. Uh, it's gonna tell uh, the front end editor this happened, uh, but we need webhooks as well. Uh, the second way, which I generally would recommend, uh, is the redirect flow, uh, which is basically we redirect to something.gocardless.com and then they take over everything. They make sure if I change the country to US, uh, everything's fine. They make sure everything's working and then they once we are complete once we complete the flow we'll come back to our application so we covered yeah we covered the modal flow and we covered the redirect flow now why is this important okay so the fact is if you build everything yourself there is a lot of uh, headache that you have to take over uh, and make sure you're compliant so there is a third way the partner integration and you can start there but you uh, Payment pages like this payment page has a lot of regulation behind it. So for example, this logo, this logo, more details, you have to specify the type, the country, and you have to specify all these details. This, these are all regulated. Uh, font size, text size, is it clear? Is it not clear? Has the customer been informed? So all this regulation, you can try and go through their partner portal integration and let me i'm sure there was build a partner integration go to partner portal uh they have guides on the ux guides that you have to use this and the bank has to approve those uh payment pages before the bank will let you uh process live payments so they'll have to, they'll actually do a verification. They'll check, okay, sufficient information has been provided to the user and the bank will verify and then the actual payments will be, uh, the actual production payments will be enabled. So the third partner integration way is only for like just uh, very large companies, I'd say. Generally speaking for startups that we work with or for like many, even start, even SMEs, enterprises, it's just better to go with the hosted pages unless there's some extreme reason for not using the hosted page. Okay, so how was this done? Uh, it's relatively, these two were relatively straightforward. We have the, in the developer do, developer.gocardless.com, some guides on how to do instant first payment plus direct debit creation. There are other flows as well. There's the GoCardless hosted pages or the JavaScript do, drop in. 
the the javascript drop in has javascript and react the gc hosted pages you can just make an api call uh, we'll in bubble we'll use direct rest api calls if you're using a code and implementation you'll just use their libraries they have lots of libraries in php python node.js go etc so the first step is just create a billing request this essentially tells the http so this essentially tells uh, go cardless that oh this is the type of payment this is what's the description this is the amount uh, this is the currency and the scheme that we are requesting back for the uk so if we go to our app in bubble plugins api connector uh, okay so in api connector we can have uh, first you need the key that's generated in the go cardless dashboard it's bearer authorization private key and header you do need these two go cardless version in the header and content type in the header as well and then you can create like json requests so uh, the live api is api.gocardless.com the sandbox api is api-sandbox.gocardless.com and then you can pass the JSON here and any parameter that you want to uh, parameterize, you just wrap it in like these brackets and you can use it in workflows later as well. The next step is to create a billing request flow. Okay, now this flow, it's redirecting all over the place. Uh, so create a billing request flow, another API call. This is basically telling us, okay, when, when you when we ask the user to go away to go cardless if you want to click back come back here and once you're done come back here so once you're done come back to my-company.com slash landing once you're exited come to my-company.com slash exit so you just change these url parameters and you pass the billing request that we generated in the previous so we create the billing request first and the billing request flow afterwards Okay, so second API call, uh, create billing request flow. Uh, this is the URL, again, JSON, uh, JSON, JSON post, and we just parameterize billing request. Of course, in the production instance, we'll pr parameterize these two as well, but at the moment, I'm just recording initial learnings and thoughts uh, around this. So after you parameterize this, uh, the response actually gives you the URL. So you have the redirect exit authorization URL. That's the URL you have to redirect the user towards. Okay. And once you redirect the user towards this, they'll just go away and actually proceed in go cardless. Once they're done, they'll come back to this URL, uh, which should be correct one afterwards. Uh, and there will be web hooks as well. So a uh, straightforward workflow for redirect. It's uh, create a request. You can change these and then uh, create a billing request flow, which kind of provides the re request billing request ID and then open an external website, which is the billing request flows authorization URL. So just if I, uh, no, not this, if I preview and take it step by step. So the first step is billing request happening. And this is the result of the billing request. And then we make the API call to create a billing request flow. And this is the result of the billing request flow API call. And we have this URL, authorization URL, which we redirect the user towards, open an external website, and we have gone to gocardless.com. We complete the details here, we exit, and then we'll come back to uh, our website slash uh, my company my dash company dot com will parameterize those of course uh, to come back to our own application okay and the second way which is the modal flow so this one is uh, a, a javascript drop in not looking at react for bubble we're looking at just vanilla javascript so first you just have to inject the script in the header which is just their uh, kind of like it has all the good stuff in there so you copy the script and you can paste it either in the script header site-wide header i've at the moment just this is our test application we have all sorts of other stuff as well so i've just placed it here in the header of this particular page only not throughout the website 
uh, if you have one page where you do co cardless stuff, you should just put it in the page itself. And the next step after that is uh, avoid react. We create billing request and create billing request flow similar to the previous kind of redirect flow. So you still need to make the same two API calls. But once the billing request has been done, then you have this initialize the drop in step. So that you can initialize and open the modal itself. Okay. So initialization has a little bit of code. It just creates an object. Uh, you just pass, have to pass it the billing request flow ID, make sure you pass it sandbox or live, depending on what you're doing on success on exit. Uh, and then you have to call open or close. Uh, these are handlers functions handlers in this. So in our bubbles case, we installed the toolbox plugin, which allows us to run JavaScript. And then we first we make the two API calls so that we have the uh, what's it called? Uh, we save the result of billing request ID and billing request flow ID in states and it runs JavaScript. This is basically initializes the handler, passing it the right billing request flow ID and also calls handler dot open, which opens the modal. So if I show it in preview run mode, I'm going to do step by step. So first, make an API call to go cardless, then make an API call to go cardless for the billing request flow, and then run JavaScript, which creates the handler and then also run, opens the modal. And now uh, we, we are in go cardless. Go cardless is powering this UI. Okay. And the next steps after this will be to make sure we write callbacks and handler yeah, handling callbacks. That was the word I forgot about like front end webhooks kind of thing, uh, handle the on success or on exit callback. So for example, if I click cross is on exit, uh, just nicely handle the UX there. Or if we complete the whole thing, nicely handle the UX there. So we need to handle those callbacks. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Handle these callbacks. And yeah, so that's, yeah, as, as I said in the beginning, this is just an initial, okay, scope out the effort needed for go cardless for one of our like client, uh, projects or prospects, uh, depending if they close. Uh, so I was just looking at go cardless, exploring the thing. Uh, but once I thought, okay, I've done enough research, might as well record a video and share it with others and, uh, hope it helps somebody. Uh, if you want us to work on your projects, uh, please do get in touch using the link below and uh, like this, share, subscribe, uh, retweet, all the good stuff. Thanks. Bye.